Okay, everybody. Uh, hello. Um, well, with all this crazy uh, COVID-19 going on, uh, the koi keeping still continues. And uh, if you've been following my videos, you would have known I've added a few fish of recent, uh, probably two weeks, three weeks ago in. And um, they've been fine. And uh, uh, I was meant to be away uh, in the Caribbean right now, actually flying. But uh, the conference has been cancelled that I was speaking at. So I'm home and uh, checking over the fish and I decided to uh, give them a bit of potassium for marginate. Um, so some of you have asked about a video about showing how I treat. Now, by all means, don't follow what I do. Follow the guidelines that is given to you on the packet because I've been doing this uh, for a number of years and uh, I tend to treat mine uh, slightly different to the packet advice. But uh, as far as weighing out the solutions, the amount, I use my own potassium permanganate, which is a factory grade. But again, don't do what I do do what the package tells you to do as uh, you're not to follow me you're to follow your package but as far as the procedure go I can show you so I make sure there's lots of air going in the pond uh, the bottom drains I don't run it's only when I'm treated I tend to have them on I make sure that the potassium permanganate has been boiling in an air stone for 15 minutes so it make sure it's completely dissolved uh, in boiling water not just hot water but boiling water out of the kettle so there's two kettles of uh, boiling water in there over my amount. I'm treating 6,500 gallons. And uh, so I make sure that there's the right amount in there and lots of air. Also today has been a really sunny day. And um, the time now is has dipped down. I tend not to treat potassium in bright sunlight because the sun rays itself can affect the potency of the potassium permanganate. So I tend to wait till the sun goes down. <clears throat> before I treat, not in darkness, but basically without direct sunlight on the pond. So I'm going to pause the video and then uh, slowly uh, release the potassium permanganate. I spread it over the water and make sure it doesn't, a cloud of potassium doesn't go over an individual fish or fishes as it was. So I, I increased the RPMs to keep everything circling in quickly. And uh, I got lots of air going in. I've knocked the food off because you don't want the food going off during the treatment because the fish wouldn't eat it anyways, but it'd just be a waste of food uh, in that way. So I'm just going to uh, pause this video and the next time it comes on, the pond should look purple. Okay. So you can see some potassium is going in. It's already purple and um, <clears throat> I tend to run it for four hours uh, and I don't uh, neutralize it. I'll show you that at the end of the video. Um, so you can see the air is going in, the fish are swimming in purple. I've still got uh, lots of treatment in the bucket. I tend to take my time and do this because you can't be cavalierish with potassium permanganate. It can kill your fish. So you have to be careful how you put it in. I take my time and do this. There's no rush. And then also I make sure I'm home. I don't leave the koi unattended at any time. So I've uh, increased the flow rate of the pond from 1700 RPM to 2000 rpm on a flow friend pump um, I've got lots of air going in as you can see it's boiling like a little bit more than I normally would like just because uh, with potassium permanganate so uh, most of the potassium is in I left back a little bit um, and I will add that in a moment but as you can see uh, the pond is well and truly purple but to give you an idea of the amount of the color if you look at there it's slightly, that's the dilute amount, slightly purple. And that's what I've got left over. So eventually I'll add it all in. But I like to hold off the last bit just for about an hour or so before I add it, let them get used to this. Um, you don't want potassium burning the gills. If it burns the gills, game over, right? So you wanna make sure it's nice and diluted in the amount that you put in. You've gotta know the volume of your pond. You don't guess the amount, you know the volume of your pond and you work it out on the manufacturer's packet. I use um, potassium, that's a chemical grade one, um, but you could use any of the normal koi potassium you would like, and that's fine. And they would tell you the amount per gallon that you can use uh, from your favorite manufacturer. I tend to use the crystals. I don't use stuff that's ready diluted. Crystals in my mind are better in that way. And uh, then I dissolve the crystals thoroughly in a full bucket of uh, hot 
boiling water from the kettle and then I mix that with pond water um, after it's been under an air stone, uh, the air stone in the bucket for 15 minutes to make sure everything has been churned and melted, dissolved properly. So the fish will be in this now. Uh, the time is now 4.30, so the fish will be in this um, till around 8.30 tonight. And uh, like I said, I don't, I don't neutralize it. If I need to neutralize it, I can. I've got sodium thiosylate that I can add if I think there's a problem. But I tend not to do it. I let the trickle in, trickle out, clear it on its own. Um, so that, in a nutshell, is potassium permanganate going in a pond. I might film a little bit tomorrow to show you the after effects of it being treated. But uh, So they're going to soak in this now for a good four hours. Uh, I don't add any more, um, generally. Um, I just leave a little bit back and I add them a little bit later on. Because I'm not feeding them much. They're feeding much, there's not... A lot of loading on the pond as far as DOCs so the potassium would uh, work its magic uh, sometimes when you feed in heavily and you put potassium in it's spent within an hour hour and a half uh, in that case then you need to make sure you sort of run a trickle in before and clear your DOCs so that when you treat when you do treat it's all done properly all right so I'll close this off for now and uh, next time you see should be the fish out of it potassium. so uh, this is sodium thiosylate I brought it out to show you what it is, and I bought it, buy that online. And uh, I would use uh, about a half a cup, teacup full, uh, to neutralize this if I was doing that. But like I said, I tend not to uh, add anything, and I let it do its own magic for four hours. And uh, so, so far, it's been coming up to an hour now, and the fish have been fine, no sign of stress, no sign of gulping at the surface. I've been checking them. Uh, ever so often I've got the ventilations all open, I've got the air coming in, I've got the pond circling really fast, so just to keep everything, lots of oxygen going in the pond is the key at this stage, okay? So while this is, uh, the potassium is working, uh, it's a little bit of a waiting game, so uh, I've got three hours, I would tend to go in the house and come back out, I'm sitting in the back by the pond, it's a bit of a uh, nice spring day uh, and like I said I was meant to be actually now in the sky flying I'd probably been halfway to St. Lucia and then on to Trinidad but because of this COVID-19 uh, um, conference was changed cancelled postponed sorry to a little bit further on so I may go again a couple of months if all these settle down or when settle down I should say so again if you treat in with uh, potassium permanganate make sure it's not rushed make sure you're home uh, you're not leaving the pond unattended. You check the fish regularly. You add the treatment slowly. Uh, also, make sure you know the gallonage of your pond, uh, how many gallons you got or how many liters, and then follow your manufacturer's advice as per how much uh, they recommend grams per, per ton or per liter or per gallon. And um, once you follow that, and make sure that you, you spread it on the surface evenly um, dilute it so there's no cloud of potassium permanganate going over the fish because it's a deoxidizer it's oxidizing agent sorry and once it's once it hits whatever it does it oxidizes it and um, um, it removes the oxygen it would actually burn the gill of the fish so uh, you got to make sure that it's um, put in properly um, it's nothing to be scared about because to be honest with you once you've done it for four hours and it's spent it's probably it, it's already done and there's nothing after the four hours you could do about it and it's one of the safest uh, um, chemical you can use if used properly and if you know how you use it my pond is only 1.5 meters deep as well if you got an overly deep pond you want to be careful and like I said I'm no expert I'm just a hobbyist so whatever disclaimer you want there there is one there I'm no expert I'm a hobbyist and I make sure there's lots of air going in the pond, uh, make sure that there's lots of air going through the filtration. I don't bypass anything. So uh, all the potassium goes through everything. It contacts the media, contacts the pipes. I don't bypass, because if you bypass and there's parasites in there, um, it will be a number of weeks and they'll come back. So I tend to make sure everything gets a good full blast through with the potassium permanganate. And I only tend to treat if I'm going away for a long time um, or if I know that there is an issue and uh, with these fish there was new fish added in after quarantine and uh, they were showing signs of the parasite and I scraped and sure enough I found it so 
I couldn't show you that because I was just on my own and it was very difficult to scrape and film and net a fish scrape film all them sort of things so uh, it's being treated now and um, it's a very small amount of parasite and uh, but it's always good to catch it early days and uh, that's what I will do so I tend to uh, do it this way uh, all the time for four hours solid potassium and that will kill off uh, a number of things it, it, it can touch flukes in my experience it don't but it removes the mucus um, but uh, it's good at destroying costilla in my experience uh, also trichodina and chilodina, although a lot of those things I never get anyways. Um, um, so I tend to use it for that and, and uh, as, a, as a course of treatment after four hours and it's sort of died off, the next day if I feel that there's flukes in there I may add flubamol, flubanol the next day or a couple hours after um, I feel the pond has been cleared properly but I tend to wait 24 hours anyways. Um, but in this case, there's no need to add anything else. So, um, so at the moment, it's just been cooking and treating in that way. So, uh, hopefully, by the next time this video comes on, might be tomorrow or later tonight, you'll get to see the see them out of the treatment. But they're going to be in there for a while. Just came back out after half an hour, uh, just to show you how the fish are, and you can see they're not sitting on the bottom or gulping although one or two like this one may come up and take a gulp of air because of the oxygen depletion in the pond um, but generally they need to be keep moving around like you're seeing right now uh, swimming nobody's sitting on the ground or worst of all no one's uh, gasping for air at the surface and that's important okay so it's uh <clears throat> you see the light is on now it's now uh that's the time. So you can see it's been, I've knocked the air off. I've got it by remote control, just so you can see. But all the fish are still swimming around. Uh, it's getting dusk, they still have got another two hours uh, or so, two and a half hours or so to soak. And um, I've just added the extra last bit, about half an hour or so. And uh, the fish are all looking good so far. And um, yeah, so the air is going in on the side. I've knocked off the center drains just for filming. I will turn them back on as soon as I'm done, but just to give you an update on this thing. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and um, learn a little bit how to add potassium permanganate safely to your pond. And like I was saying earlier, it's uh, not something that you should be <clears throat> scared about, but you should treat it with respect. As with any chemicals you're going to add to your pond, some of them require certain KH, some requires that you follow the guidelines strictly. Um, so with potassium, it's the same way. Make sure you do as the manufacturer suggests. And uh, I think someone, a dealer said to me once that uh, one of the manufacturers actually put batch numbers on all of their treatments. So if there's a problem, you can trace it back. But to be honest, I don't know how that's going to work because, well, you can think about it yourself. Human error, who are they going to blame? Are they going to put their hands up and replace all your stock, etc., etc., etc. Maybe they do. Maybe if you're a manufacturer of potassium or another one of those things, then you could uh, let us know what you would do if uh, somebody was to wipe out their stock by using one of your chemicals. So it is now nine o'clock at night, and uh, um, uh, you can see the lights on the camera because it's so dark to film. Nine o'clock at night outside, it's dark and uh, the treatment has been spent. Um, it's now um, no longer purple. Uh, when I came out around 8.30, it was still purple, which was the time that it should have spent. And uh, 10 minutes later, it spent out. And so the trickle in, trickle out is on a little bit heavier, just to clear it up. And then uh, tomorrow I will be able to show you the koi and hopefully they're all fine. I suspect they'll be okay. Um, normally with potassium permanganate, uh, keep the air flowing at night. Uh, I've got the central air off a bit. Um, I've got enough oxygen here. I leave the windows open and the pond just to let fresh air through to the pond.